Hey again, everybody. Welcome back to Beginning Algebra. Today we're in section 1.5. Last time we learned how to add real numbers, and today we are learning how to subtract real numbers. So I'll show you how to use the definition of subtraction to work your subtraction problems. We'll talk about how to use the rules for order of operations when subtracting, and we'll also practice translating words and phrases that indicate subtraction. So here we go. Now first off, the answer to a subtraction problem is called a difference. Remember that the answer to an addition problem was called a sum. The answer to a subtraction problem is called a difference. Now we already know the rules for addition. Remember from our last video we had two rules for addition. And now instead of learning a new set of rules for subtraction, we're going to learn how to convert subtraction problems into addition form and then we will continue using our addition rules. Once we get used to this process, we can relax it just a little bit because it will become natural to you, but right now in this section, I'm going to always do this conversion process very strictly. So if you are already good at this process, don't worry, we're not going to have to be so strict with our steps throughout the course. Now here is the definition of subtraction. For any real numbers x and y, x minus y is defined as x plus negative y. So you probably already know this. If you think about how we did our bank example in the last video, remember that when we talked about withdrawal, I said that instead of subtracting the amount that's being withdrawn, we'll think of that as adding the negative amount. So you might already have had a clue that subtraction was going to turn out to be adding the negative of that number. And in fact, when you think about the definition of subtraction in words, to subtract means to add the opposite. Subtraction means to add the opposite. So look again at this definition and you can see it. To subtract y means to add the opposite of y. So here's how we will convert subtraction to addition form. We'll just change the subtraction symbol to an addition symbol. In other words, change minus to plus, and then we will change the sign of the number that comes next. Then we'll have an addition problem and we can use our addition rules to find the answer. So here is example one. We're just going to perform each operation. On part A, we have 12 minus three. So we're going to convert this to addition form. Even though we already know that 12 minus three should be nine, I want you to see how this process works. So let's go ahead and convert 12 minus three to addition form. So that's gonna be 12 plus the opposite of three, which is negative three. Now think about your addition rules. The addition rules say that when the signs are different, we should subtract and keep the sign of the larger number, which is positive. So 12 minus three is nine, and the answer should be positive. And in fact, remember, we already knew that the answer would have to be positive nine. You've known since you were six years old that 12 minus three is nine. So that's not what's new here. It's not that we now have to do these complicated steps every time we have subtraction. It's that anytime you look at a subtraction problem and you get turned around on how the rules ought to work, you always can convert to addition form and that will always help you find the right sign for your answer. So let's look at part B. Here we have five minus seven. We want to convert that to addition form. So that will become five plus negative seven. And now you can see that the signs are different. So you subtract the numbers and keep the sign of the larger number, which here is the negative. So seven minus five is two, and we keep the negative sign on our answer. Now, if you think about this, it makes sense. If you have, say, $5 and you owe somebody seven, then $5 minus the seven that you owe means that you are in the hole $2, so negative two. All right, let's look at part C. Here we have negative eight minus 15. So translating this to addition form, we will have negative eight plus negative 15. 
Now you can see that the signs are the same. And so when the signs are the same, we add and keep the sign. 8 plus 15 is 23, and the sign is negative. So our answer here is negative 23. All right, on part D, we have negative 3 minus negative 5. Now, to change this to addition form, we will change minus to plus and change the sign of the next number. So changing negative 5 to positive 5, we will just write 5. There's no need to write plus positive because whenever a number is positive, we just don't write its sign. So here we have negative 3 plus 5, and so the signs are different, so we will subtract. 5 minus 3 is 2, and then the sign of the larger number is positive, so our answer is positive 2. And on part E, we have a couple of fractions, and you just want to remember that your fraction rules and your sign rules can both work at the same time independently. So we will rewrite this as addition. This will become 3 eighths plus positive 4 fifths. Now you see that we need common denominators to finish up this addition. Now if you think about what is the smallest number that 5 and 8 can both go into, you'll come up with a common denominator of 40. So the question now is what do I have to multiply times 8 to get the 40 that I want? And the answer is we'll have to multiply this by 5. That means we also multiply the top by 5. And on 4 fifths, in order to change the denominator to 40, we'll have to multiply by 8. So we show multiplying by 8 in both the top and the bottom. On the first fraction, we see that we're going to get 15 over 40. And the second fraction becomes 32 over 40. And now adding 15 fortieths plus 32 fortieths, we have 47 fortieths. Now, this is an improper fraction, but it cannot be simplified, and there's no need to convert it to a mixed number form because this was not a mixed number problem to start with. Now, notice that the subtraction symbol looks like the negative symbol. So sometimes when we see that symbol, we say minus, and sometimes when we see it, we say negative. When this symbol is the only symbol between two numbers, we treat it like a minus sign. So you know that when you see something like this, you read it as 8 minus 3. But when it comes before a number, we treat it like a negative sign. For example, here we have 7 plus negative 5. Now, since we know how to convert all subtraction to addition form, it makes sense to have only one symbol for both uses, and they are very similar. My advice is always read the problem mentally, and if you hear yourself say minus, then you can convert that problem to addition and use your addition rules. So now on example two, let's practice subtracting with grouping symbols. Remember, we start with the operations inside the innermost grouping symbol. So for this first example, we need to start with the eight plus three because that's in the inside pair of parentheses. Now 8 plus 3 would be 11, so I will recopy this problem as negative 6 minus bracket 2 minus 11. Okay, now we still have a grouping symbol here, so we still need to complete the operation inside these brackets, so we'll work on 2 minus 11 now. Now since this is a minus problem, I'm going to convert it to addition form. So 2 minus 11 becomes 2 plus negative 11. And now we can see how to use our addition rules. Here we have different signs, so we should subtract and keep the sign of the larger number, which is negative. So this problem now becomes negative 6 minus negative 9. And again, we have a subtraction here, so I will convert this to addition by writing negative 6 plus 9. And now we can see that the signs are different, so we should subtract and use the sign of the larger number. We end up with positive 3 here. Let's look at part B together. So first, I notice that I have an inside pair of grouping symbols, but there's no operation to do in here. So really, these parentheses are just to remind us that this is a negative sign. So we have 1 12th minus negative 1 4th. Let's start by converting this subtraction to addition. So we're going to have 2 thirds minus 1 12th plus positive 1 4th. 
Okay, now you can see that we need to perform the addition that's inside these brackets, but because we're adding fractions, we will need a common denominator. Now, one of our denominators is 4 and the other is 12. Since 4 goes into 12, 12 can be our common denominator. What would I have to multiply by 4 to get the 12 that I want? Of course, we would have to multiply times 3. So we multiply top and bottom here by 3, and that's going to give us 2 thirds minus 1 twelfth plus 3 twelfths. Okay, now still working on the addition inside the brackets, 1 twelfth plus 3 twelfths will become 4 twelfths. And so now we have 2 thirds minus 4 twelfths. Now you could think about getting a common denominator here. Of course, you could multiply this fraction by 4 over 4, and you would have twelfths. But we got lucky here because I just happened to notice that if I simplified this fraction, its denominator will be 3. So let's do that. Both of these numbers can be divided by 4. 4 divided by 4 gives us 1, and 12 divided by 4 gives us 3. So essentially here we have 2 thirds minus 1 third, and 2 thirds minus 1 third, of course, is 1 third. And that's how we do part B. For our next objective, let's look at some of the different ways that we can indicate subtraction. We could say difference of, subtracted from, from this, subtract that. Or we could say less, less than, decreased by, or minus. So here we have an example of each of those phrases, and we're going to practice writing out the numerical expression for each one. So this first one says the difference of negative 3 and negative 8. Now remember a difference means a subtraction. So here we would just say negative 3 minus negative 8. So the difference of negative 3 and negative 8. Now to evaluate this we would want to convert it to addition form. So that would give us negative 3 plus positive 8. Now you can see that the signs are different so we subtract and use the sign of the larger number, which is positive. So negative 3 minus negative 8 is 5. And now our second example says 12 subtracted from 18. Now a lot of people get this confused, but think about it. If you have 12 subtracted from 18, it means you started with 18 and you took 12 away. So you need to actually write the 18 down first and subtract 12 from that. So 12 subtracted from 18 is actually going to be written 18 minus 12, and of course that works out to 6. Now this next example says from 12 subtract 8. So in this case we're starting with 12 and we're taking away 8. So 12 minus 8 of course is 4. Here we have 6 less 5. So if we start with 6 and we have then 5 less, that would be 6 minus 5, which is 1. Now this next phrase is very similar to the last one, but it is different in a very important way. This one says 6 less than 5. Do you see the difference between 6 less 5 and 6 less than 5? With 6 less 5, we started with 6 and we took away 5. But if you think about it, 6 less than 5 means we have to start with 5 and take away 6. So we will write 5 minus 6. Of course, when we convert that to addition, we will have 5 plus negative 6. And because the signs are different, we subtract and use the sign of the larger number and that's going to come out negative 1. Then we have 9 decreased by negative 4. So decreased by, of course, means to take away. So 9 minus negative 4. We will convert to addition form, so 9 plus positive 4 is 13. And then, of course, if it's simply the word minus, that's no problem at all. 8 minus 5 is written exactly the way it sounds. And 8 minus 5, of course, is 3. Now, just another reminder, when you're subtracting two numbers, 
You have to be careful to write them in the correct order. It's a very common mistake to write your subtraction down in the wrong order, and of course that changes your answer because order does matter in subtraction. We know that 8 minus 5 is 3, but 5 minus 8 would be 5 plus negative 8. It would actually work out to negative 3. So getting the order wrong will make your answer come out with the wrong sign. The two phrases that people have the most trouble translating correctly are subtracted from and less than. So really think about those and make sure that it makes sense to you why they don't go in the order that you see them written in words. Let's practice now translating these phrases into subtraction problems. Part A says the difference of negative 8 and 5. So we would write this down as negative 8 minus 5. Let's convert to addition form. So this would become negative 8 plus negative 5. Now you can see that the signs are the same, so we add and keep the sign. 5 plus 8 is 13, and the sign is negative. So negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. On part B, we have 4 subtracted from the sum of 8 and negative 3. Now remember, if we have 4 subtracted from something, that something came first. So let's first write down the sum of 8 and negative 3. Sum means addition, so we will have 8 plus negative 3, and then from that, we will subtract 4. So I went ahead and put our first sum in brackets just to make things very clear, but we have this sum here, and from that, we subtract 4. Now let's go ahead and work what's inside the brackets. 8 plus negative 3, we have different signs, so we'll subtract and use the sign of the larger number. That's going to give us 5. So now we have 5 minus 4, which is 1. Let's look at part C, 4 less than negative 6. So this is another case where we start with this number, and then we end up with 4 less than that, so we take away 4. Let's write negative 6 minus 4. Converting this to addition form, we'll have negative 6 plus negative 4. Now we can see that the signs are the same, so we add and keep the sign. That's going to give us negative 10. And then on part D, we have 8 decreased by 5 less than 12. So it's going to be 8 minus this quantity here. Let's start by writing 8. Decreased by means that we'll have a minus. Now, 5 less than 12 is its own little quantity, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. 5 less than 12 means I'm starting with 12 and I'm taking 5 away from that. So we're actually going to write 12 minus 5. So 8 decreased by 5 less than 12. Now working inside the parentheses first, 12 minus 5, of course, is 7. So now we have 8 minus 7, which is 1.